My name is Martin Ritchie Seidner. I was born uh, February 1st, 1925 in Arkansas City, Kansas. My father's name was Roy Daniel Seidner. I believe he came from Indiana. Uh, a wonderful guy, uh, quiet, smoked cigars all the time. He had a, a linen supply business. He would uh, travel around the, the country uh, delivering these linens to various places, barbershops and what have you. And I used to ride with him. And uh, the roads weren't paved in those days and we did have a lot of muddy roads to drive through. I was probably five, maybe six, uh, when I traveled with my father. My father served in the Mexican-American War. Uh, I'm not sure how long, but it wasn't very long before it was over. He wasn't a, you know, a highly paid successful man, but he was a successful man in my book. Uh, he's dedicated to the family. Yeah, my mother came from Muskogee, Oklahoma. My mother was a very loyal person, very dedicated and a hard-working woman. Everybody should have had a mother like that. She could do anything, anything. Beautiful artist, beautiful cook, raised five kids. When I was in high school, I dated a young lady, very attractive. Her name was Joanne Radley. I met Joanne uh, for the first time when I was about 15 years old. When I got married, both Joanne and I were 18 years old. Uh, rather young, but I'm kind of glad of it. We got married in Winfield, Kansas. I don't even remember how many people were there, but it's relatively small. He is an American, prepared to accept his responsibility to protect and defend his nation and those he loves. That is the soldier's mission a mission which has never changed. That's right. I joined uh, the Air Force when I was a senior to keep from being drafted. And I joined the Air Force and went into flight school. Yeah, they told me I'd get to finish my senior year uh, in high school uh, if I joined, but I didn't. I was called shortly before uh, I graduated, but I got my diploma anyway because the Superintendent felt I was entitled to it. Yeah, at 17, I went to basic training and went to advanced training in Pampa, Texas. That's that's Joanne. She's pointing at my name on the leaderboard there for all the people in the service. And I think she's got a ring on. Yeah, she got a ring on there. Yeah, I was gone uh, right off the bat. And, uh, you know, it was difficult, but you would send a lot of letters back and forth. Uh, I had to fly co-pilot for the first four hours to get indoctrinated to how to fly the airplane. And then I became qualified as a first pilot. I made my first flight in the B-26 when I was 18 years old, shortly before I turned 19. Well, it was a twin-engine airplane. Went from single-engine uh, airplane to a twin-engine. The maximum speed we flew in the twin-engine was about 120 miles an hour. That's me sticking my noggin out of a B-26. The airplane actually had a bad reputation. It's known as a hot airplane. Took a lot of speed to get it off the ground, and it landed long also. It was also called a Widowmaker because so many guys were killed in it. It was lack of training that caused it, but nevertheless it happened. I w must confess that I was a little disappointed when I got to be 26 because I, I'd wanted to be 17. But uh, you didn't always get your choice. Well, first of all, 17 got four engines. The B B26 only has two. I went into active duty March 28, 1943, and I went on to fly 48 missions as first pilot before I was 21. I flew in World War II and uh, it was about the, the problems with Germany that we had at the time and uh, we consequently declared war. Hitler was their, their German leader 
And uh, the, the, towards the end of the war, he and his girlfriend, I think, both committed suicide uh, when they saw they were going to lose. I flew uh, missions in Germany, Italy, and France. My airplane, I flew a lot of missions in it, named it Jomar, after Joanne was my wife's name, and Marty, M-A-R for Marty. And she wanted to name that, so I had him painted on there. One of our big jobs was to uh, halt the, the movement of supplies. And to do this, there's several ways to do it. You could bomb a a landfill, where it's difficult to make, repair them, you know, and uh, marshalling yards, where a big conglomerate of trains could, you know, would come in and load and unload. Uh, oh yeah, and ammunition dumps too. We, we got a couple of those, and boy, did they make smoke. We'd hit them and they'd explode everything, got it. Looked like the world was coming to an end. So we bombed areas that made it very difficult for them to live. And pretty soon it began to catch up with them. That was one of the happiest days of my life when we realized the war was over. So uh, we got to come home shortly after that. You accumulated so many credits for different things. And I had a very large number of credits so I got to come home real early because of that. Well, there's a lot of cleanup effort that took place. Uh, and some people had to stay and go clean up the messes that we'd made around the country. I was lucky I didn't have to do that. But a lot of guys did and before they could come home. We had areas where there's a quite a number of casualties. I mean, there were bodies were piled high, and uh, they had to go out and bury all those guys. Mm. I'm glad I didn't have that job. Mm. Uh, you know, they physically picked them up, threw them in a hole, just buried them. When I got out of service, I was offered several scholarships, but I chose a uh, school right there in town because I already had a family. My first job was as a coach of all sports in a small town of Dexter, Kansas. And uh, the basketball team had finished last in the league the year before. And the year I went there, we won the championship. So I felt like I turned them around pretty good. And then I got a job up at Boeing, Wichita, paying a lot more than I was making as a coach. So I took the job. Mm -hmm. I was in what you call functional test. That involved testing all the equipment that went on the airplane before it went on, make sure it worked properly. It was an interesting job. It taught me later on uh, when I became a rep for companies that sold that equipment. Uh, you know, I represented one time 10 companies. Uh, worked out fine for me. My son Marty was born in 1946. Four years later, my daughter was born, and she's been a good one. My daughter's name is Lynn D. Yeah, uh, two kids is all I wanted, a boy and a girl. That's what I got. Michelle was my first granddaughter. Brian was my first grandson. Uh, Lynn gave me two grandchildren. Aaron and Jamie Lynn.